Anna, a city girl from New York, was in the middle of a European tour when she met Jake, a charming Aussie, on the sun-kissed beaches of Santorini. A shared love for travel and an inexplicable connection drew them together, turning a chance encounter into a beautiful story of a whirlwind romance. When they met, they couldn't have expected the turmoil their union would bring about. But before we start, smash the like button and make sure to subscribe if you haven't and hit that notification bell so that you won't miss any new stories. In the span of two months, they uncovered the mysteries of Greece, roamed the romantic streets of Paris, and braved the harsh yet breathtaking landscapes of Iceland. Through these adventures, their bond only deepened, each city becoming a symbolic milestone in their rapidly blooming relationship. As the sun set over the Icelandic fjords, Jake, with a trembling hand, presented Anna with a delicate ring. Back home, they planned a small wedding with only their parents in attendance. Their families, initially wary of the hurried decision, were soon won over by the palpable love between the two. On a crisp autumn day, Jake and Anna finally got married. Anna's parents, George and Martha, were traditional in their ways. When the daughter announced her plans for an intimate wedding with no official photographer, they felt a pang of worry. How would they capture the precious moments of their only child's wedding? But George, with his old Nikon camera, had a light bulb moment. Martha, he said, his eyes twinkling with excitement. Why don't we make the photos ourselves? Martha, a retired art teacher with a keen eye for detail, was thrilled by the idea. On the wedding day, they positioned themselves strategically. Martha focused on close-ups, capturing tender moments and expressions, while George took care of wide shots, immortalizing the ambience of the wedding. After the wedding, George and Martha took on the task of organizing the photos. One sunny afternoon, they invited family members to relive the magical day through their images. They had arranged the pictures carefully, each one a chapter in the story of Anna and Jake's special day. Everyone loved the photos of the location, but it wasn't until the couple came into the picture that things changed. As Jake and Anna weren't there at the time, the family was seeing Jake for the first time through their wedding photos. When George flipped to the next photo, Anna's aunt Carol suddenly stood up, her face pale, she pointed at a photograph, her hand shaking slightly. Who's that? She asked, her voice barely above a whisper. She was clearly pointing at Jake. That's Jake, Anna's new husband, answered George, looking amazed by the shocked expression on Aunt Carol's face. She looked at him like there were a thousand thoughts running through her mind. After the mysterious incident at the photo viewing, Carol went quiet. George, her brother, was at his wit's end. He had tried to contact her numerous times, leaving messages, sending texts, and even showing up at her doorstep, but Carol remained elusive. Now, in her silence, that puzzle seemed to grow more complex. George and the rest of the family were left wondering, what was Carol hiding? This mystery was one that George knew he had to unravel for the sake of his sister and their family. George stood before Carol's home, once again knocking on her door. This time, however, he was determined not to leave until he got some answers. After several minutes of persistent knocking, the door finally swung open. Carol stood there, her expression stern, her eyes fiery. Why can't you just leave me alone, George? She snapped. We need to talk, Carol, he said, his voice steady. You can't keep ignoring me. After a moment of silence, Carol reluctantly stepped aside, allowing George to enter. They sat down in her living room, tension filling the air. Why are you angry, Carol? George finally asked, breaking the silence. It's none of your business, Carol retorted, her tone icy, but George wouldn't be dissuaded. Carol, you're my sister. Of course it's my business, he responded gently. Carol's face softened and her eyes welled up with tears. Finally, Carol managed to get the words out. Adam, Carol replied, her voice shaking with emotion. The name didn't ring a bell with George. I don't understand, Carol, who's Adam? Adam was an Australian worker who came to our town about 36 years ago, she began, her voice barely audible. We fell in love, George, he was my first and only love. George listened in silent shock. His sister had kept a secret love hidden all these years. He was here for a construction project, Carol continued, and we spent every moment we could together. But after four months, he suddenly returned to Australia. He never explained why. George, I think, I think Jake might be Adam's son, George was stunned. What was Adam's last name, Carol, he asked, already knowing the answer. Bennett, Carol replied, confirming their shared suspicion. Adam Bennett, that was indeed Jake's last name. 
The next day, George found himself at Jake and Anna's home. The young couple was surprised by his sudden visit, but warmly welcomed him in. Once they were seated, George wasted no time in getting to the point. Jake, he started, trying to sound as casual as possible. Can you tell me about your parents? Jake shifted uncomfortably, seemingly taken aback by George's question. Well, my father, Adam, was a construction worker from Melbourne, he began. George's heart pounded in his chest. It was the same name and the same occupation as Carol's long-lost love. Jake continued, he was in America for a short while for work, and during his stay, he fell very ill. He almost lost his life and had to return home for treatment. My mother, a nurse, helped him through his recovery. George listened with wide eyes, each word adding weight to his suspicion. They fell in love and had a brief relationship, Jake carried on. They had me and a couple of years later they separated. She wasn't at the wedding because she still held a grudge against my father. Yes, she is a complicated woman, Jake said laughingly. George was shocked, he didn't know what to say. The story matched up too perfectly. Jake was indeed the son of Carol's lost love, Adam Bennett. Jake added one last thing and that would change everything. After the wedding, his father did not head home straight away. He said that he had some unfinished business in town. Adam was staying in a local motel about five miles down the road. Was this unfinished business a reconnection with his long-lost love, Carol? George wondered. He decided to talk to Carol first. Yes, Carol, it's me, Adam confirmed, his voice filled with a mix of relief and anticipation. It was a surreal moment for both of them, a moment that had them at a loss for words. Adam, looking a little nervous, broke the silence. May I come in? He asked gently, his gaze holding a silent plea. Carol, still in shock, nodded, stepping aside to let him in. They spent hours talking, unraveling the intricate web that was their shared past and its impact on the present. Adam spoke of his sudden illness all those years ago, how it had taken him back to Australia, where he had fallen for a compassionate nurse during his recovery period. He spoke about his son, Jake, about the strange coincidence that Jake had ended up marrying Carol's niece. I saw the invitation, Adam confessed. It was an invitation to my past as much as my son's future. I never stopped loving you, Carol. I tried to start a family back home, but it just never felt right. They spent the next couple of days together, reliving their past and thinking about the future. They dated long distance, and one spring day, Adam returned to stay for good. Two years after Anna and Jake's wedding, the family gathered once again for a new wedding. This time, the bride was Carol and the groom was Adam. It was strange for the young couple, Jake and Anna, to see their families intertwined in such an unexpected way. Carol and Adam's love story, despite being full of trials and separations, had found its way back home. The atmosphere was filled with love and happiness as the family celebrated the union of these two long-lost lovers. George, once again behind his old Nikon camera, and Martha with her artist's eye, were back in action. This time, they were capturing a different kind of love story, one that spanned decades, braved separations, and endured the test of time. The guests were teary-eyed as they watched Carol and Adam finally exchange their vows, their voices filled with love and devotion. The newlyweds danced their first dance to a soft melody that seemed to encapsulate their journey. It was a scene straight out of a fairy tale, complete with a beautiful bride, a handsome groom, and a love story that had finally found its happily ever after. Their love story, as unusual as it was, became a beacon of hope for many. It proved that love knows no boundaries, not of time, not of distance. It was a testament to the power of true love.